Hello. You know, all of us want to feel good and be at the top of our game, especially at work, no matter what we do. And I can tell you, there's nothing more important to feeling good than getting a good night's sleep. But sometimes that's easier said than done, right? And as someone who has had problems with sleep over the years, I was personally surprised to learn that one in five adults in the U.S. has what's called sleep disordered breathing. One in five. Isn't that amazing? And most of those people suffer from what is known as obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA for short. Now, if you're watching this video, chances are you're one of those people too. Now, I don't know about you, but when a doctor tells me that I have some kind of disorder or disease, I want to find out everything I can about it. I'll bet you're the same way. And that's what we want to do in this video. Define what OSA is and then learn more about what you can do about it. Because bottom line, while the quality of your sleep is most important, if you sleep more, you can do more. And who doesn't want to get the most out of life? So, what is OSA? We asked Dr. Aliyah Farooz Colborn to sit down with us and help explain it in simple terms. So, Dr. Farooz Colborn, what exactly is obstructive sleep apnea? Well, obstructive sleep apnea is a medical condition that happens to some people when they sleep at night. And what happens is that they can actually stop breathing or have a loss of airflow for 10 seconds or longer. You actually stop breathing? Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, it can happen for 10 seconds or longer all throughout the night. That sounds really scary. So, so, so how does this happen? When we sleep, the tissue in our throats will sometimes relax. And if you have extra tissue or if you have uh, more relaxation of that tissue, then sometimes what will happen is the airway will actually be blocked. Wait a minute, doesn't that mean you're actually suffocating? Yeah, you're actually suffocating. It is very dangerous. And what happens is, is that as a result of the airway being blocked, the brain senses that the oxygen level in the blood is going down, and that control center will actually kick in and do a couple of different things. It will cause the patient to, to gasp for air. It'll also create an arousal, and that is where the, the person will go from a sleep stage to a wake stage very transiently. They're not gonna end up being aware of that transition. And during that stage, it's literally like a shot of adrenaline going through their system. They have to wake up and breathe. Yeah. That shot of adrenaline will increase the heart rate. It'll cause potentially arrhythmias. And if that happens repetitively throughout the night, that can lead to high blood pressure and cardiac arrhythmias and a lot of the things that we see with, with untreated sleep apnea. And how long does this go on? Well, it can go on all night. Um, it can go on for hundreds of times a night without the person being aware of it. So one in five people suffer from it, but what causes it? Well, it can be different things in different people. Some people might have um, extra weight, uh, extra fat in the upper airway. Some people have extra, extra tissue bulk. Um, that's not related to fat. They're just anatomically large. And some people have more of a relaxation of the upper airway muscles during sleep. Do more women have OSA or more men? Well, it is more predominant in men, but after the age of 50, usually after women are postmenopausal, it is pretty much equivalent between men and women. So what about the effects? What's happening to the body? Unfortunately, OSA can have a whole host of uh, medical consequences like high blood pressure, diabetes, even an increased chance of heart attack and stroke. So obesity can cause OSA, but can it also be caused by it? Absolutely. Obesity can actually be a result of sleep apnea because once that person has sleep apnea and they're not treated, uh, a whole host of things can actually happen. Body mechanics, if you will, and the hormonal changes that occur from not having treated sleep apnea will actually cause changes that prevent that person from losing weight. They will actually increase their appetite and they'll probably overeat. And additionally, the sleep deprivation from untreated sleep apnea will cause that person not to make the right food choice decisions and, and probably be too tired to, to exercise. Mm. So unfortunately, it, it ends up being somewhat of a vicious cycle. How does somebody know if they actually have OSA? 
Well, interestingly enough, it's one of the most underdiagnosed medical conditions. Obviously, when this happens at night, you're not aware of it happening, you're sleeping. It becomes very difficult to detect. Some of the signs, um, if you have a bed partner, uh, if they notice that you're uh, snoring and the snoring is getting progressively louder and then all of a sudden they don't hear anything anymore, then that's the sign of apnea. Also, if there is no bed partner, but you wake up tired in the morning, you don't have as much energy as you used to, and sleep isn't as refreshing as it used to be, those are also good signs. Mm -hmm. So if you suspect you've got it, or you're getting a lot of elbows in the night, uh, how do you get diagnosed? Well, you should talk to your doctor about it, and very likely what will happen is, is they'll refer you for a sleep study. And, um, and with that information from the sleep study, they'll determine the severity of the problem and uh, discuss treatment with you. And what's the best treatment? Well, the most common treatment is uh, something called CPAP, which stands for uh, Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. And essentially what it is is it's a small device that gently uh, blows air in and can support the upper airway to prevent it from collapsing. And it is a long-term therapy, not a cure, but it is very, very successful. Dr. Farouz Colburn, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, there's a saying that knowledge is power. I believe that's true. Armed with the knowledge of what OSA means and how serious, even life-threatening, it can be, the next step is to find out what you can do to take care of it, what you can do to sleep more and do more. I hope you'll join me on this journey of discovery.